not a small project. This is actually a fairly big project. So to to make your first project a really big project, that's a fairly that's a fairly risky thing. On any leading edge project, you have to go into territory that's um, by definition um, fraught with risk um, because it hasn't been tried before. a risk-averse culture, otherwise you would never get up uh, off the ground. Um, so you have to have a risk-tolerant culture, and you have to work with advisors who can help you, who have more experience in certain areas than you do, who can help you identify where the risks might be so you can, you can manage them, avoid them, or, or mitigate them. Um, for Evergreen, we, we, it, it, it really changed uh, our, our culture. We didn't approach things. We, you know, until about the last year, I never talked about risk. You know, it was more like, how do we do this? You know? And if we all sort of row together and are smart about it, we'll, we'll pull it off. Risk management was a critical thing for us, how we handled it. If we had been more cautious in our risk management, we would, this project would not exist, guaranteed. So the way we've handled the sequence of decisions around releasing dollars for construction, um, releasing dollars for the development of the project has been absolutely right. Uh, although it would freak out the average board and staff from a risk management perspective. I call it the hippie shit attitude. There's a, there's a not-for-profit part of our world that goes, don't worry, somehow it'll all work out. And I think that's why in some circles the not-for-profit world has been regarded as being less than efficient and <laughs> perfect. Um, what's one of the other great skills that Evergreen brings are people like Amy Stein. So a really serious financial modeling, control-based, you know, accounting person who gets it. And having those skills is almost more important than having all the design skills and all the construction skills and all that technical knowledge. Because if you can't make the draw payment within the 31 days allowed for by the construction contract, it's going to be a big irritating problem. We have raised money, we have borrowed money. All the money will be paid back, right? Given time, the money will be paid back. It's a, it's a time situation. It is very chicken and egg. You can't wait till you have the resources to get started on it. In some cases, people won't give you any money until they can see what you're, what you're going to do. We managed very tightly in terms of finances, in terms of scope, in terms of what's in and what's out, and never exceeded the budget that was at first set out for this project. And that was a constant throughout. We never went over that budget. So, uh, so we did it by both very emergent and adaptable behavior, but at the same time, some very tight and tough management of what was going to happen here. There were a number of moments in this project which were uh, very difficult to move through. There were times in this project where everybody wondered, I'm sure, uh, where are we going with this? What are we actually going to accomplish here? Um, they particularly had to do with um, reconciling ambition and budget. explored all kinds of possibilities and figuring out how to distill all of those possibilities into a concise economy of means kind of approach was a huge challenge. We had a, uh, an anticipated spend budget that exceeded our, uh, our budget by uh, a considerable amount. We made a decision to postpone the redevelopment of four buildings, buildings 4, 9, 10 and 11 for some sort of future phase. And we feel good about that decision now. It was, a, it was a great decision at the time. It allowed us to take five or six million dollars that we would have spent on those four buildings and invest them in the rest of the site. And uh, we, uh, the, the, probably the best thing about it is that we've got four buildings that are awaiting future ideas and future partners. Our capital campaign's still not finished. And I wouldn't say it's a white knuckle moment, but Raising $55 million of capital is a fairly significant thing. And we had hoped, I think, that we would have been able to raise all of that money by the time we are where we are now. And, you know, it's kind of deferring off a little bit. We went through a major recession. That was the exact time we started Brickworks Up. 
And I just thought, you know, this is going to be really terrible because the world is shutting off its economy and we're going to try and raise $55 million. You've got a situation where you've, you know, you've got, you've got a client who's, who's not for profit. <laughs> And, um, and um, that means that you know, they have got to go out and do a bunch of fundraising. They don't have a balance sheet. They don't have a track record in this type of activity. And it's a huge project. I mean, we're talking about a transforming project for, for a small organization. Nobody ever felt that the project would not succeed. And so certain decisions were made around uh, financing and spending of money uh, that were aligned with that expected uh, future. So we, we've gotten ahead of ourselves uh, in this particular moment. We've spent money ahead of actually receiving the money and, and there's been a lot of anxiety within the organization around that point. Um, but I'm proud to say that both the staff and the board have embraced the fact that the project will succeed. Yeah.